Hi everybody, and welcome back to my um, Intro to X course. I haven't recorded a video in a while, and I'm going to do a short one. I didn't write out a script or anything for this, so I'm going to do a probably relatively short one on variable selection, uh, specifically variable selections for expected goal models here. And one of the things um, we talk about in the social sciences is something called a garbage can regression. Uh, the term was invented by Christopher Aiken, who's a political scientist slash methodologist. And his basic idea is that every, every extra variable you add to a regression model causes a number of different problems with the modeling assumptions, causes different problems with multicollinearity, all these sorts of issues with hypothesis testing, etc., etc., etc. I think he argues you should limit your models to a, two or three variables at most, um, but we also, we also know that's not feasible in a lot of cases. So what I want to go over is proper variable selection in an expected goals model. Uh, I'm going to use my NWSL data, the National Women's Soccer League data here, but this applies to any model you run, any regression model you run specifically. And expected goals models, I think, are probably a pretty good example of this. There's a lot of debate in the community about you know, what variables are we missing? What variables do we need to add to make our models better? What, you know, are we missing body shape? Are we missing the wind, the blades of grass? The, these sorts of things, like what exactly are we missing? But the real question is, are they, how important are they? And are they important at all? And are they worth junking up the models that we already have? So what I want to do is go over my full model here. And then I wanted to show you the model selection version of it and the differences between the two, how it works, etc. So the first thing I'm going to do is run my full model here. Um, so and I'll post the code on a um, gist somewhere. But I run my full model using probit regression, and you've got you know a bunch of variables here. I've got my dependent variable is was a goal scored, obviously, and that's coded as one zero. Uh, diff is the goal difference at the time of the shot. Y is the distance between the goal line and the center line. Where was the ball shot on there? Um, angle is obviously angle to the center of the goal. Time is at what time during the match was a goal shot. Pressure is defined as was a defender close. I think it's within one yard of the shooter, pressuring the shooter. Um, Foot is, was it kicked? Counter, was it on a counterattack? Home team, was the shot taken by the home team? A goalkeeper error, was the goalkeeper out of position, making an error at the time? Was it on a free kick? Uh, was it a corner? And then this interaction between pressure and what I call close, which is coded as one if a shot was pressured inside the box, zero otherwise. Because as in a previous uh, video, I showed that, or previous blog, I guess, actually, I showed that Distance only matters for shots taken within the 18-yard box. So, got my full model there. I'm going to run my predictions. And then what I'm going to do is run something called the Akeki's Information Criterion. And as you can see, R is scrolling through a bunch of stuff here. Um, but this was named after a statistician named Akeki who created the idea of model fit. And a special way of doing it, a particular way of doing it, I should say, and the idea here is that he penalizes you for adding more terms to your equation. So the more variables you have, the more terms you have in your equation, the higher the AIC will be. And your ultimate goal is to minimize this function. You want the lowest possible score. The idea being that models with a bunch of extra variables you don't need in there are problematic. You want to maximize the information the model gives you while minimizing the number of variables. This helps you see what the most important variables are from your equation. So that's what we're doing here. Uh, this is better than things like the R squared, which a lot of people use, uh, because the R squared, actually, the more variables you have in your model, the higher the number is, just in general. That's not necessarily a good thing, because you can easily maximize an R squared, play some games, get it higher, just by adding more variables, and that's not something you want to do. Adding irrelevant variables is not necessarily a good thing. Actually, it's quite a bad thing. I shouldn't even say it's not necessarily good. It's a bad thing. So the AIC, the lower the number, the better our model is. 
What I did here is run what's called the step AIC command in R. And what this does is find, go stepwise to find the best possible model. So as you can see in the terminal here, you probably can't read this, but it goes through a bunch of different variable selections here. It starts the full model, it drops out a couple, drops out a couple, drops out a couple, and looks to see what happened. Okay, so when we have this model and we delete these variables, the AIC goes down. Okay, so let's try a new version. Oops, we can still make it go down. Still make it go down. Still make it go down. And eventually we get to the very bottom here. And we get to the best possible model, which for us is going to be a goal is predicted by the goal difference at the time, the vertical distance to goal, the angle to the center of goal. Was it scored on a counterattack? Did the goalkeeper commit an error? Was it on a free kick? And our press times close interaction variable. So we started a variable a model with, let's see here, we started with a number of different variables. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we cut it down to 7. So it turns out about half of our model isn't actually necessary to include. All that matters is the goal difference, distance, angle. Was it a counterattack? Was it a goalkeeper error? Was it a free kick? And was there pressure inside the box? So we're going to run that as our new model then. We're going to store that as XG2. Run the summary. There's your table. Uh, predict the values. The last thing I'm going to do here, and this is going to be a relatively short video, is I'm going to run the root mean squared error. And the first thing I'm going to do is run it against the ignorant model, I call it. And the ignorant model is basically every shot has an equal chance of going in. And it wouldn't be an intro to analytics video if Mango didn't walk by. Hi, Mango. Um, he's staring at me, as you can see in the corner there. Um, it wouldn't be an intro to analytics video without Mango. So does every shot have the same likelihood of going in? And I calculate that by taking the mean of our variable here. What percentage of shots turn into goals? I created something called ig.preds, it's the ignorant model's predictions. That means 12% of all shots went into the goal. And so I run that root mean squared error on all three of my set of predictions here. So what I'm going to do is run the root mean squared error. And a reminder, the root mean squared error is basically how much error do you have in your predictions. You want to minimize this number because you want to minimize the amount of error in your predicted values. So I run it for my ignorant model and I get 0 0.325. Not great, not bad. Now I run it for my probit.preds, which is my initial model, the one with the 12 variables in it. And I find an improvement of about 10% overall, about um, you know, 0.03. So I go from 0.325 to 0.296. Not bad. Um, that's a pretty decent improvement, actually, over the ignorant model. So now what I want is run it on the second set of predictions. So I ran it on my full model, now I'm going to run it on my other model. And as you probably can't see, but I'll tell you what it says, I went from a root mean squared error of 0.2964 in the full model to a root mean squared error of 0.2965. So 0.2964 to 0.2965. That's one ten thousandth of a point difference. That's virtually no difference between the two models. Adding all those extra variables, those five extra variables, only gives me one ten thousandth more of predictive success. That's not much at all. So I want you to take from this a couple things. One is that complexity isn't necessarily the most important thing in these types of models. You don't need 50 variables. You don't need to collect all sorts of data. And all sorts of data doesn't necessarily make it better. As you can see, adding five extra variables and ones you think might be useful. Was it kicked or was it headed, for example? Was it the home team or not? Only added one ten thousandth of a point more precision in our predictions. This model is better. The simple model is the one I like better. It's simpler, it's clearer, and it predicts the outcome just about as well as the full model. Um, so when you're creating your models, keep that in mind. Keep the idea of using stuff like the AIC, 
to predict the right variables and to make a more simplistic parsimonious model and to learn a little bit more about expected goals and what actually matters what you actually need to collect thank you all for watching this is about a 10 minute video so life is good thank you all and i hope you enjoyed it